Mark Cuban's investment strategy. A mix of disruptive technology, cryptocurrencies, small businesses, and S&P 500 equities make up Mark Cuban's investment portfolio. 1. Disruptive tech creates long-term value. Cuban contrasts the mid-1990s streaming entertainment industry with the current cryptocurrency market in a 2022 interview on the podcast The Problem with Jon Stewart. The convenience of turning on the radio or television was superior to streaming music back then. The necessary software, gear, and internet connection for streaming were less common than they are now. After 25 years, Grandview Research estimates that the worldwide video streaming market is now worth more than $50 billion. Additionally, according to the Market Research Agency, the sector will increase at a compound annual growth rate of 21% until 2028. In Cuban's opinion, the fledgling crypto economy is still overcoming challenges that are preventing widespread acceptance, much like the streaming business did in the past. But he asserts that, like streaming, cryptocurrency will develop over time and develop its own ecosystem. 2. Trade with Conviction Cuban makes investments in organizations, ideas, and causes that he believes in. For instance, his passion for technology and sports helped him launch a venture that would eventually become Broadcast.com one of his early economic successes. Because he believes in the value of diversity for business, he has also invested more than $50 million in funds and enterprises operated by women and people of color. I've put more than $50 million into funds and businesses run by men and women of color because I believe there is a special opportunity there. Cuban exhorts other investors to adhere to their own convictions. For instance, he counseled meme stock investors to stand by their beliefs in a Reddit. Why sell? He asked, if you still believe in the reasons you bought the stock, and those reasons haven't changed. 3. Learn from your mistakes. When I first started trading equities, I made some costly mistakes. It hurt a lot, but I made an effort to learn from my mistakes. Cuban acknowledges that he has done poorly in both business and investing, but he also shares what he's learned from his mistakes when he talks about his failures. A company selling powdered milk was one of Cuban's earliest commercial failures. He had to learn the hard way that customers preferred to spend more money on authentic goods. Cuban is hence more diligent at cautiously assessing chances without allowing presumptions to distort his perspective. 4. Don't be reactive. Cuban stated, if you don't fully comprehend the hazards of an investment you are contemplating, it's okay to do nothing, in a blog post from 2010. During two distinct market downturns in 2016 and 2020, he reiterated the advice to do nothing. Cuban's do nothing recommendation cautions against hasty buying or selling. Spend some time considering your potential investments rather than acting fast. Rushing into a purchase or sale of a good company won't benefit you because strong companies last a long time. Interestingly, this suggestion is consistent with the viewpoint of other well-known investors, such as Warren Buffett. Mark Cuban's Best Investments Cuban has a diversified investment portfolio, but according to statements he's made in interviews, his greatest holdings are well-known stocks like Amazon, Netflix, and Twitter. 1. Amazon Cuban acknowledged purchasing Amazon around $500 to $700 per share in a 2020 interview on The David Rubenstein Show. A share of the ID company's stock cost around $3,200 in the first quarter of 2022. Cuban revealed in 2019 that he had nearly $1 billion worth of Amazon stock. Though its enormous online store is what makes Amazon most famous, the corporation is involved in more than just online shopping. Local networks, live sports, and original programming are all made available on Prime Video via Amazon's content division. Additionally, the company sells home security and connection products, such as Fire TV, Alexa Echo, and Ring Video Doorbells. 
Additionally, Amazon is bigger than Microsoft as a provider of cloud computing services globally. 2. Netflix Cuban tweeted in 2014 that he was acquiring Netflix stock because he believed the streaming company will be bought out. He also claimed to have paid $50 per share for his stake. Although it continues to be an independent business, Netflix's share price has reached a high of $680. Since the second half of 2021, the stock has had some difficulty and in the first quarter of 2022, it fell as low as the high 300s. Subscription fees are how Netflix generates revenue. Customers who utilize the streaming service for original and licensed material from the company are devoted followers. The monthly cost of a basic subscription is $9, making it affordable enough for widespread use. Despite recent increases in competition, most notably from Disney+, Plus. Netflix is still the industry leader in streaming video. 3. Twitter Longtime Twitter shareholder Cuban recently increased his stake in the company in 2020. He believed that Twitter will fare better than its social media competitors once advertising started to pick up following the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. Early January 2020, Twitter shares fell to a three-year low. It did bounce back, almost tripling in value to $77 per share by the beginning of 2021. The social media stock has since wilted, falling as low as the mid-30s. Roughly 90% of the social networking services income comes from advertising charges. The remaining 10% is generated by data licensing and service charges. Mark Cuban's Crypto Portfolio Cuban has high hopes for the cryptocurrency industry. He is a shareholder in Polygon, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. Cuban's Shark Tank investments total 80% in the blockchain and cryptocurrency sectors. Investments Mark Cuban avoids Like the majority of investors, Cuban is aware of the characteristics that make an opportunity uninvestable. Below are three of those non-starters. Companies with low barriers to entry. Low entrance restrictions are not appealing to Cubans. He will probably pass up the chance if competitors may easily imitate the business concept. As an illustration, Cuban declined to invest in the Doha More engagement and wedding ring business, which is expected to earn $11.5 million in revenue in 2021. Although the company was growing, he didn't believe it was sustainable. Cuban had a problem because Doa Moore's humanitarian endeavors served as its primary point of differentiation. Similar strategies might be easily adopted by other businesses, eliminating Doa Moore's competitive advantage. 2. Companies that need a lot of capital to grow I really dislike businesses that need to raise hundreds of millions of dollars to generate low revenues. Jamie Siminoff the founder and CEO of DoorBot advertised his smartphone doorbell on Shark Tank in 2013. Siminoff departed the show without concluding a contract since his company had no takers. Later, Ring would replace DoorBot, and Amazon bought Ring in 2018 for more than $1 billion. Cuban, though, stands by his choice to forgo the DoorBot investment, noting the amount of money needed for the business to expand. 3. Businesses He Doesn't Know Cuban is drawn to businesses and industry sectors that he is familiar with. Using his own knowledge to improve his investing and commercial decisions is what he refers to as the knowledge advantage. On the other hand, he should refrain from making investments in fields that are unfamiliar or boring to him. Please subscribe for more investing videos.